G'day, my name's Tom. Welcome to part 7b, Graded and Action Potentials. If you haven't already seen part 7a, I'd recommend watching that first. So, uh, I just want to talk about refractory periods for a moment. Um, we have absolute and relative refractory periods, and I'm just going to show you um, on this uh, graph here. So, if we have a, an action potential, should go a bit higher and hyperpolarizes and then comes back to normal. The uh, while it's while it's doing the, its action potential, um, it it can't generate another action potential, and this is due mostly uh, due to um, sodium uh, and potassium ion channels, uh, particularly sodium ion channels uh, and their inactivation gates. Um, because, uh, as we saw in 7a, um, it had, uh, sodium ion channels have inactivation gates, uh, which allow them to close very quickly, and um, you know help us uh, generate the action potential, of course, very quickly as well. Um, so they're they're a lot quicker to act than the potassium um, uh, ion channels. Um, but here, of course, we have uh, the absolute refractory period. Um, oops. Sorry, refractory period. So because of that, um, oh, and that that lasts generally one or two milliseconds. Um, so this absolute refractory period is actually followed on um, by the uh, relative refractory period. And what that is, um, is actually, um, because when we, uh, as, as, okay, so as we saw in, in 7a, um, the sodium ion channels are a lot quicker to act, open and close, uh, than the potassium ions, which are a bit sluggish. Um, and due to that, we actually see that um, it takes, so say this was the resting membrane potential, uh, sorry, the threshold level, threshold, uh, and this is normal, right? Um, once we've had an action potential, the threshold actually jumps up and then sort of comes down slowly um, and this is caused uh, by the um, uh, by the slow uh, uh, the, the slow potassium ion channels it takes a little while to, to get back to normal um, to the normal resting conditions and because of that um, we see this uh, this what would otherwise be a normal threshold level down here we see it gradually come down um, and so it it actually takes um, a greater uh, excitatory um, uh, stimulus to initiate an action potential. So here, we, although we went over what would otherwise be the normal threshold, we're unable to act, uh, make an action potential uh, because of the uh, because the, the uh, potassium ion channels are still trying to recalibrate and get back to normal um, but you know if we go over that then of course we get an action potential as normal so but of course by doing that we've created again an, an, another instance of a um, an absolute and relative refractory period so um, yeah this is sort of uh, one way that uh, limits the amount of uh, action potentials at any one time. Uh, this helps, uh, I suppose, dis um, discern between uh, potent like uh, the frequency of potentials and and the strength of a stimulus. So, oh, and the the relative. <coughs> pardon me. Sorry, um, the relative refractory period. Um, uh, is generally on the order of about six to seven milliseconds. 
Okay, I uh, just want to talk about uh, action potential propagation. Um, here is a, uh, an image you might be familiar with from uh, part one of this series. Uh, this is an unmyelinated axon. Um, so if we stimulated this dendrite, say at an arbitrary level of 10, um, and then of course we'll get, uh, let's say it's a positive um, postsynaptic and excitatory um, postsynaptic potential, uh, and we'll get into postsynaptic uh, potentials a bit later on. So, but let's say it's making the cell more positive, uh, so it releases this positive charge evenly throughout the cell, uh, not dissimilar in, in the same, it's pretty much a greater potential. Um, and of course, the point which most matters is this point here, the accent hillock, uh, due to its high concentration of sodium. Uh, voltage-gated ion channels and um, so it therefore is able to uh, create a action potential uh, response more quickly um, because it's high density of voltage-gated sodium ion channels um, but here uh, of course it's 10 but by the time it reaches here because of course with greater potentials uh, as we go farther along uh, the the, uh, uh, the polarization becomes weaker um, so here it might have already got down to 2 um, whereas if we stimulated here for example which is a lot closer to the axon hillock at the same level we might actually only be at 8 so you can see here that the stimuluses uh, which, uh, attach th uh, which attach themselves closer to uh, the axon helix tend to have uh, more of a, an impact. So, but anyway, of course, we get here. So you know, let's say we had a, a stimulus and it goes above threshold, we get an action potential. And what that does is, um, of course, immediately it becomes quite positive. But we also get um, this, this here, this type of greater potential is called an electrotonic uh, electrotonic uh, conduction um, and or an electrotonic potential um, and because of that um, we because we've, we've you know, as we saw here it's a passive uh, flow of current and we've just increased uh, our uh, our uh, uh, positive charge here, we're going to get a passive flow of current electrotonically down the axon and also in this direction too. But um, this point here is the point which matters for us uh, because, uh, as we'll see, of course, is that uh, it will reach threshold by that passive um, electrotonic conduction and create an action potential and it just keeps going on and on and on so um, because we keep getting a, a passive every time we do an action potential we get this uh, passive uh, flow electrotonic conduction down the axon and um, an important question to ask is why doesn't um, when, when we make this positive here for example and we get electrotonic flow in both direction, directions, why don't, don't we get another action potential here and then, you know, flow going this way? Well, as we saw above, up here, uh, refractory periods play a part. So if we've just stimulated this section, <coughs> pardon me, um, uh, if we've just stimulated this section, it's it's going to be probably um, in absolute or if not relative refractory period. So it's unable to to go that way. So this this is how we get a single um, a single direction. Although um, it is possible to get two directions, but that's just a bit more advanced. Um, so um, yeah, so we get it get this uh, response and 
neurotransmitter or similar. Um, and I've, I've drawn here, so this is an unmyelinated axon, I've drawn here um, a myelinated axon, so we get the same sort of thing happening. But when we um, use electrotonic uh, conduction um, down the neuron, um, we're, we're getting a quite a large uh, positive here, slightly less and slightly less, of course, and it keeps getting less. Um, but here, where the myelin sheath wraps around the axon, which is highly modified plasma membrane, uh, you know, on the order of um, hundreds or uh, hundreds of layers, um, and because of that, we're unable to um, create an action potential at this point, uh, or at this point, or at any other point which has myelinated. Um, which has myelin sheath uh, surrounding the axon. Um, this also means, actually, that the nodes of Ron Vier, uh, the gaps here, actually have a high concentration um, of ion channels, um, of voltage-gated ion channels. So that means that they're sort of um, they're similar in a way to the axon helic in that they have a, a uh, high capacity to, um, uh, to generate an action potential or they're able to uh, create one uh, more quickly. So anyway, we get an action potential here, which again creates a large positive um, uh, yeah, inflow in of uh, ions and then we go down gets positive here again and and it just keeps going so it sort of hopscotches um, and again we can't go we can only go in one direction uh, due to the refractory periods affecting the previous section um, and yeah we go this way of course as well so I hope that's clear um, I'm just also going to mention that there are we can also group neurons according to their axon diameter and whether or not they're uh, myelinated. Uh, here uh, A-alpha neurons which have uh, a fairly large neuron are the best conductors um, because not only are they myelinated but because they're quite large they don't leak as much um, and so they can actually uh, transmit the speed of their conductance is something, or the maximum is something like 120 meters per second. Uh, here, the A beta neurons uh, are quite a bit smaller, and uh, they can only go up to a max of about 75 meters per second. The A delta, uh, they can go up to a max of about uh, 30 meters per second. And here, um, the C neurons, which are unmyelinated and quite small, uh, can only go up to a maximum of about two meters per second. Um, so I just wanted to mention this so that you could appreciate the um, relationship not only between myelination but also diameter of axons, and um, and of course the the speed of their conductance. So, all right, this has been part seven B graded and action potentials.